and properly in our storage room. For the waterers, we also do manual cleaning, same thing. So whenever we do the cage and bedding changing, so together with, uh, with the cages, so we need to replace it with clean waterers. So the used waterers, again, are also soaked in water and detergent for 30 minutes in our sink. And then we scrub it with the sponge and re rinse it thoroughly 20 times again and dry and store it properly. So again, for those that would be building their animal facility, there is a fully automatic cage and water cleaning system. What you can see, this is a 40 cage, 40 water capacity. Uh, and the good thing about this one, this is a high pressurized um, hot water cage water cleaning system. It can clean 40 cages in a matter of six minutes. So it saves you time and resources. How I wish uh, we have this set up, uh, but I think for those that would be planning to put up their own laboratory animal facility, so I think this is something that you can ponder on because it saves you time and resources. And in, it ensures, of course, quality, uh, quality cleaning of your cages. For sanitation of animal rooms, this is my mantra. So clean before you go. So uh, definitely every time you enter the lab animal room and you do a certain procedure, you need to clean it. So sweep the floor, mop the floor, segregate and dispose the waste properly, and you need to wipe and disinfect our working tables or areas. So every time one person enters, so you need to ensure that it would be properly clean so that the next person would be ensured that it would be clean for her or his usage. And this is how we segregate our waste. So we have colored, um, color-coded uh, garbage um, containers and with the appropriate, of course, gar garbage bags. And we segregate them as non-contaminated burnable, non-contaminated non-burnable. We do have biomedical waste and animal carcass. And I think, uh, again, this uh, classification of waste would be discussed in detail by either by Dr. Katap or Dr. Hernandez. Now, for the storage of animal carcass, since we um, dispose them using a DNR accredited uh, disposal company, so we do have a dedicated freezer and we segregate them as non-contaminated or contaminated. So the difference is that you need to autoclave the contaminated animal carcass prior to placing it in the designated plastic bag and placing it in the freezer. So for animals, we do daily monitoring. No? And that is the role of your lab animal caretakers, including all stakeholders, and most especially your facility veterinarian. So we do daily ocular inspection of animals, ensuring proper nutrition and management. Uh, we have weekly body weight to ensure that we have a good management system. We also observe for dif different signs of uh, abnormalities, illness, or injury. And if there are any injuries, we check for any defects of cages. And then we check for wet cages because usually this is a problem with the drinking waters. So you need to make sure that you remove the mice and replace and place them in new cages with new beddings. And just in case you're breeding, um, you need to document births, uh, illnesses, and mortality. And you need to report uh, it to the facility veterinarian and the facility manager. And we also investigate cases of mortality. So definitely this would require further testing and examination by the facility veterinarian and they make the appropriate reports for this. So um, again, remember um, as uh, we uh, monitor the animals, you cannot ask them if they are in pain, what's abnormal, so which means that you have to rely on ocular and behavioral changes in the animal. And I think this is a very useful um, um, test that you should uh, uh, remember. This is what we call the Grimace test. This was developed by Dr. Leach of the Newcastle University. And these are the different 
uh, facial no actions that you can see when animals are in pain. So they have a grimace testing for rats, mouse, and rabbits. So please check them out. They are available online. And I think this is a, a very good way for you to assess if your procedures that you are doing is inflicting pain and distress to the animal. For purchasing of animals, so definitely you need to quarantine even if you buy it locally or from abroad, from local uh, vendors, it would require seven days of quarantine period so that your animals would acclimate to the new environment prior to usage. And for animals that are abroad, it is recommended that you do 14-day quarantine period. And for the monitoring animals, which is the role of the lab animal caretaker as well as the facility veterinarian. So definitely we check on the different health parameters such as body weight, body condition scoring, feed and water intake, physical and clinical assessment of animals. So definitely the hair coat, the physical appearance of the animals would uh, and behavioral changes would give you uh, problem issues in the animal. And definitely the veterinarian would be able to do some tests in order to confirm it. And it's only animals that are healthy that should be used for uh, whatever endeavor the, or purpose that you uh, purchase them. And definitely veterinary care is important. I think it's good if you have a full-time vet. This would be the advantage of institutions with, um, with uh, veterinary degree programs. But I think uh, for some universities or institutions, uh, then you need to hire a part-time facility veterinarian. And these are the rules of the veterinarian. So animal health monitoring, ensuring proper care and management of your animals. They can also supervise surgeries, anesthesia, euthanasia, and other technical methods. Trainings, no? lab animal training. And of course, uh, definitely when you buy, whether abroad or local, so we do check the health certificates of animals that you would be purchasing, ensuring good quality of animals. And of course, when we say animal research, animal facility, there is no weekend nor holidays. So definitely there would be SOPs for weekend emergency and holiday care. And of course, uh, your facility veterinarian should be on call in order to address these problems. So definitely there would be a skeletal force or lab laboratory animal personnel that would be on duty uh, on a daily basis. So ito po yung reality when you do animal research. There's no holiday, even Christmas or New Year. And I have experienced that. Where in New Year and Christmas, we were conducting some experiments. And with that, so I, I, this is a, a very helpful reference. So um, one of the key drivers of laboratory animal uh, care and management would be the Philippine Association for Laboratory Animal science or PALAS. So this is a manual that we wrote together with uh, uh, my other colleagues from PALAS. This is the basic training manual for handling rodents and rabbit. And this was funded by PCHRD DOSD. So I have included this in my presentation. So you can uh, contact the PALAS Secretariat via email and uh, you will be able to get a copy of this basic training manual. So even the hands-on uh, topics are also included in this training manual. Very helpful. No? And with that, let me end my talk by saying the humane care of laboratory animals or good care of laboratory animals also translates to good science. And with that, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Estasha, for another informative lecture. So we are now opening the floor for questions. So in the Q&A panel, we have three questions. So the first question is, um, for handling immunodeficient mice, po, does the air for the animal house needs to be filtered also to keep the sterility of the environment during feeding and changing of beddings? Yes, actually, there is a... Uh 
my next topic, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, that would be on April 26. Um, yes, there, uh, there are facility, I think the topic is on laboratory animal facility and maintenance. So yes, ma'am, there are specifics in terms of the design of the room, uh, depending on the type of animal that you would use, especially for this immunodeficient. No? So definitely, you need that IVC with uh, filtering towers. And there is also a cage, uh, cage changing or bedding uh, change uh, system that you need to purchase to ensure, even for transport of animals. So medyo ano po kasi sensitive yung immunodeficient. So that's why the the caging system and the animal room requirement is more laborious. But of course, uh, since this is your research proposal, then you can include it in your budget uh, when you um, propose it to PCHRD. Because definitely they would give the money uh, based on your research proposal po. Okay, another question is, um, can we recycle paper and make our own sterile paper as beddings? Actually, the problem is the sterile paper, it has that, yung, the one available right now for lab animals, it has that unique property of expanding. So what you can see there are, ano, it seems minute, but in all honesty, is it expands to, I've seen five to ten times its size. And it's very absorbent. I think if you're going to use the ordinary paper, I don't think it would address or it would have the same property. So I wouldn't recommend. Because the problem is once the animal urinate, it would flood the entire cage. And you'll have uh, animals that are soaked in urine. And yung urine po ng animals, whether it's rodents, especially rabbits, no? ano po yan, may irritating properties because of the urea. So it would cause skin burns to your animals. So definitely you would have uh, yung tinatawag nating bed source sa animals. No? So I wouldn't recommend using the paper. Okay. So the last question is, um, we need help in looking for a lab to conduct skin irritation and dermal irritation tests right now. Do you have recommendations? Procuring our own rabbits or guinea pigs will take time. Actually, we're conducting po those testing. Actually, I have a lot of inquiries even from industry and other project leaders. No, The problem is right now, because of COVID, uh, our university, UPLB, and specifically our building is not allowing any research or testing conduction right now because of high COVID cases. So I cannot commit po because uh, that's our problem. As for other third party, I don't know of any that are conducting. Maybe you can check UP Manila because I know UP Manila um, is also conducting dermal irritation and uh, skin testings. So you can inquire, I think it's the bedding of lab mice recommended. So parang uh, i auto claims mm -hmm. Mom, it's not recommended po. Kasi the problem is, remember you want to ensure good health of your animals. So these have been contaminated, so it's wise. Uh, actually, uh, pag kinumpute po natin yung math, no, uh, I think the bedding cost is not that much po. Uh, just to give you an idea, yung binibili namin sa Davico Bio, which is, I think if I'm not mistaken, 12 kilos, it's, it's only about 2,000 pesos. And you need only a few that you would use for your cage. So parang pag, pag, pag inano nyo yung math, it's not that expensive. I think the best thing is uh, maybe get the appropriate quotation from the local suppliers so that you would have a clear idea as to how much. But based on our operation, in all honesty, the bedding is not the big cost. Ang big cost po namin, salamat, government institution kami, 
ay yung aming aircon at tubig. Kasi buti pa po yung daga, 24 hours, 7 days a week na naka-aircon. Oo. So, yun po ang, yun, yun ang sa tingin ko na pakamahal na cost, yung kuryente. Pero yung feeds po at saka yung ibang expenses, hindi po ganun kamahal. Okay, so again, thank you, Dr. Estacio. So at this point, uh, wala na pong question. Blanca, can I, can I add? Just add? Okay. Yes. Since uh, Doc Blanca initiated the, the, what do you call this? The quiz. And we have a winner. Okay. So as a prize, okay, since I'm one of the editor of the training, Yay. laboratory training manual. So I will be providing... So, for daily, yung session nito, yung training days natin. So, I'll be providing uh, siguro two winners. Two Sige winners, po. Doc Blanca. So, with the, ano, the training manual as the price for this particular Ayan. training. So, uh, I think this would be uh, a good reference material. And I think, yun nga, para meron naman tayong price para doon sa ating mga participants. Okay, okay thank you, Doctor. Surprise po yun. So, oo, oh, kasi, oo. Oh, oh. Nung nakita ko nga, sabi ko, oo, oh, oh, para naman may incentive kasi, siyempre, nakakapagod din umupo at makinig sa amin. Okay. Po. So, ayan po. So, magkakaroon po tayo ng quiz every session. So, ang quiz po natin next uh, session ay yung pong tungkol sa ni-lecture ni Dr. Amy today. So may, may binigay na po siyang question sa akin. So I hope you you still remember. Sana nag-take notes po kayo para malay nyo manalo kayo ng ano ng manual. Okay, so at this point, uh, ayan. So uh, we would like to award the certificates of appreciation for Dr. Estacio. So may Okay, so let me read the the citation uh, of the certificate of appreciation. So this certificate of appreciation is awarded Awarded to Dr. Maria Amelita C. Estacio for having served as lecturer on the topic Laboratory Animals in Research in the Laboratory Animal Training for Biomedical Research Virtual Lectures for Tuklas Lunas Development Centers who held on April 21, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. via Zoom so signed by the project leader Raquel Rubio uh, Dr. Sinjo Saloma, the chairperson of UPD Ayacook, and our vice chancellor for R&D, Dr. Gonzalo uh, Campo Amor. So the same citation uh, for the the certificate uh, for her lecture on the care and management of uh, laboratory animals. So let us give a virtual applause to Dr. Estacio for those uh, very enlightening uh, lectures. So, again, sana nag-take notes po tayo kasi meron na po tayong prize. So, may motivation po tayo to really <laughs> participate sa ating uh, quiz for the next session. Okay, so, um, before our photo shoot, so that will be the last part of our uh, webinar for today. Just a few reminders. So, the third training session will be on Monday. April 26, 2021. So we'll have another set of uh, informative uh, talks. So again, we'll um, have Dr. Estacio. And then kanina nabanggit na po ni Dr. Estacio that we'll have Dr. Katap and Dr. Hernandez as our lecturers. And please do not forget to fill the evaluation form. The link is provided in the chat box. So before, uh, again, before the photo shoot, I would like to thank the main people behind uh, the, pro the project and of course this training, Ms. Raquel Rubio of uh, NSRI, Mr. Antonio Tab Tabellon, Mr. Jude Francisco, Mr. Gerard Orsolino, and of course the members of the UPI, 